My name is Gary Lee Ogden, and I am proud to be the superintendent of Grove Park Madison Local Schools. I'm humbled and I'm honored to serve in this position, and I am dedicated to the community of cruisers to ensure that we are always expecting nothing but the best in the work that we do. The purpose of tonight's event is to give us an opportunity to share with the community the successes of the district. This also keeps ourselves accountable and transparent to our community. In conjunction with this event tonight, we do release our annual report that is mailed to all residents of the district with, that is full of vital information. It does help us communicate the important facts and information, but it also helps inform our community about the decisions that we are making and why we're making them, and also to inform you when you are asked to make decisions about the school district as a community member. But ultimately, we really do help that, hope that this event helps bond us as a community of cruisers and help you be able to hear all the wonderful things going on and so many things that we're pleased to share with you. I would like to take a minute to introduce our Board of Education. There in the front, we have our board president, Mrs. Libby Gray. <laughs> board vice president, Nancy Gillespie. <laughs> board member, Chris Snyder. <laughs> board member, Kathy Walsh. <laughs> and um, our board member, Brian Shoemaker, could not make it this evening. I would also like to take time to acknowledge our administrative, teaching, and support staff. It is their commitment to the vision and mission of the district that gives us the reason to be here tonight and have these successes to share. I would like to take a moment to introduce our new treasurer, Felicia Drummy, and give her a few minutes to share a quick financial update with you. Good evening. I'm so pleased to have an opportunity to speak with you this evening. I became a cruiser on February 3rd. Yes, just last month. I feel like that's going to be a birthday. And during this last month, I've been so impressed by the commitment of our board, our administration, and our staff to inspire every student and every lesson every day. My role here as the treasurer is to oversee the management of our financial affairs and to allocate resources so that we can best serve the needs of our students. I want to thank you for your support in passing the levy in November. With the renewal of that five-year levy, we should have sustained operations through 2024. That financial stability will go a long way to allow us to focus on other solutions to overcrowding and aging buildings that continue to be a concern. I'd also like to take a moment just to illustrate for you our district finances so that you know where the money comes from and how we're using it. So we have two main sources of revenue in the district. We have state aid of 49%, which is the yellow piece of the pie. And you, our local taxpayers, you are providing 38% of all of our revenue. And that's the blue pie. We do have some other uh, smaller sources of revenue with federal grants and other miscellaneous funds. With those funds, we are providing for the operations and our expenses. We have two main types of expenditures that account for nearly 90% of our overall operations. 62% of that is our classroom instruction, and that's the yellow pie. Then operating the schools, our light bill, our gas bill, that's 27% for operations. We have some other smaller spending, but clearly you can see 90% is just in operating our schools. Since our school operations is, are largely supported by your taxes, I want to show you um, how we compare to other Columbus area schools. This is a chart of the voted millage rates, and you see in the yellow, Groveport Madison, we're, not, we're in the lower third, and being in the lower third is a good thing in this instance, because we are the third lowest in the millage rates that are being assessed. 
Some of the other schools like Pickerington, it looks like they might be lower, but the asterisk there, it represents that they have an income tax as well. So that's as little misrepresenting the revenue, or excuse me, the expense with the millage. So we are actually very proud that we are providing a very good value for the services that we have here to promote student achievement. In conclusion, I would just like you to know that fiscal responsibility and transparency are very important to all of us. So we have a lot of our financial information available on the website anytime you're interested in looking. We have our five-year forecast, monthly financial reports. We are audited annually. And all of that is available for you. Please feel free to contact my office anytime you have a question or a concern or a suggestion. Thank you very much. I'd like to take just a few minutes to start with sharing some of our successes and recent accomplishments. And one of the key points that I would like to address are our improved academic achievements. Our district has improved in three indicators of the six major indicators on the state report card. While we strive to improve in all areas, these are the three we've been focusing on and now we are moving towards the others. Our K-3 literacy improvement, um, that we have moved our report card grade from an F to a C, and that has been hard work from our elementary schools and teachers helping with our young readers. We have also increased our gap closing measure from an F to a B. This measure helps ensure that we are reaching all of our students, that all students um, with special programs and different ethnicities are growing at the same rate. And also our student progress overall is a B. We are also proud of Middle School South, which is one of seven, sorry, one of 173 schools across the state of Ohio to receive the Momentum Award this year. Middle School Central is one of 72 schools across the state of Ohio, earning the state's High Progress Award for achievement in reading and math. We have other increases in individual schools across the district every day that we have to celebrate. And a most recent celebration of Asbury Elementary, moving from the federal watch list to an independent school with no need of monitoring. That's taken a couple years of a lot of hard work from a lot of people. We also, um, again, celebrate the renewal, renewal of our five-year operating levy and, again, cannot thank our community enough for trusting in us to support and educate and help raise your children. We have applied for and received more than $6.2 million in grants that help us with literacy and math instruction, instructional practices for our teachers, and expanding our high school pathways and advanced placement programs. We are building our advanced placement programs, and a lot of, a, a lot of you um, with high school students, the kids refer to them as AP classes. We have 141 students taking 189 exams this year that will all equate to college credit if those exams are passed. We have launched a free universal breakfast program where all students can eat breakfast at no cost across the district. And we are also expanding opportunities for students with 81 students taking 40 college credit classes at no cost to our students. A few other things that we've worked hard to do in the past year is we were able to add choir to our middle school programs. As you saw tonight, we were able to see two of our three middle schools perform. Our Girlport Madison High School United Nations team earned a top award at the Ohio Leadership Institute. Our cruiser cheerleaders, football team, soccer team, softball team have all earned title of Ohio Capital Conference champions. And we have four Ohio Capital Conference coaches of the year in our district in football, soccer, softball, and wrestling. And a lot Sorry, Ilias Haji, one of our high school students, also has been named as cross-country champion in the Ohio Capital Conference. I'm so glad I have more screens of good things to share. Um, we have 100 seniors to date that have received our National School Readiness Certificates. That's ongoing, so that, that might increase this year. 
Our football team was recently named as the academic All-Ohio team from the Ohio High School Football Coaches Association. And this is given to teams in recognition for excellence in academics, leadership, and community service. We have 11 students who have been credentialed in Microsoft Word and are on their way to a Microsoft Office Specialist credential. This helps them with employability and career options after high school. We have 94 students in our Teacher Preparation EduCore program that um, they are able to explore the opportunity to decide if they would like to go into education in college. And our 7th and 8th grade girls basketball teams were recently named Ohio Capital Conference champions also. And lastly, we have 823 students in our high school working on pathway programs that can lead to industry credentials. So when they graduate high school, they have a credential ready to enter the workforce, or they can take that credential and transfer that into college credit. We have many district programs that we work on and that we work through with our team and our teachers to make sure that we're providing our students the best service possible. Our goal is to support and ensure the success of every student, every lesson, every day in our district. And we do this through AIM. AIM is our pathway to success through rigorous standards-based instruction and making sure that academics are at the forefront of all we do being intentional to support our students and their individual needs, and doing this with a mindset that all cruisers are valuable and all of them have the power to get the results they want. We have more than 30 programs in place to support our students' needs. We are expanding our career technical education programs with the grant. We are able to add two new pathways next year, which will be business and then career-based intervention. All of our K-12 students have Chromebooks, we have language acquisition programs for our second language learners, gifted education, a multi-tiered system of support to help our students who have academic, behavioral, or social emotional needs. We have performing arts, therapy services with occupational therapy and speech therapists working with students. We have trauma-informed care-trained staff who help our students who are living in trauma. And also, again, at the base of everything, high quality standards-based instruction. Student and staff safety is our number one priority. Um, we wanna thank our Board of Education and their support to allow us to hire a full-time director of safety. He has been incredibly busy, been with us for a portion of the year, um, and last week met with um, Representative Steve Stivers and other district superintendents and directors to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to make a safe environment for our children. We have close relationships with our local police and fire departments. We have security at our secondary schools. We have just launched a district safety committee with a variety of members from parents to community partners. All schools have state approved safety plans and active safety committees. And we have comprehensive safety training that we have conducted for all administrators who are trained in threat assessments. And we are now going through crisis prevention and response training. We have routinely practiced our safety drills and keep in, um, keep our requirements up with those and we do those drills in coordination with our fire and police and we have a safe schools hotline on our website and posted in all schools for any family or community member who might hear of a threat or is concerned it's a hotline that filters through um, several different agencies and then we are notified if it is found to be real while we have all of these celebrations that we're so proud of, we have to also acknowledge our challenges. And I would just like to briefly discuss those. Our biggest challenge right now is our overcrowding. Um, we are over capacity by more than 500 students district wide. Our buildings are old, they are worn. Um, maintenance costs are eating more and more of our operational budget. Um, we have three of our buildings that were built in the 70s with open concepts without walls, um, which significantly impact our ability to secure buildings when in an emergency situation. We are busing students beyond their neighborhoods because of overcrowding or for particular programs. We will continue to work with our Board of Education and the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission on a future plan to bring to our community. 
There's a recent article in the newspaper, if you did not see, that there's a possibility of 170 homes or apartments coming to the city of Groveport and also more apartment land being purchased on the north end of the district. We recognize that we have to address our need for space and we will continue to keep our community informed as we do that. We are committed to the success of every student that comes through our door from their preschool years all of the way to that last day that they walk across the stage at graduation with their diploma in hand. Our achievement in the past three years indicates to us that we are on the right path. We believe in a solid foundation, making sure that all of our students have the skills necessary to prepare for the things that they want to do after their K-12 experience. I'd like to take this time to take you on a cruiser journey, giving you the unique opportunity to hear for yourselves the things that our staff and students are doing each day. I think as administrators or staff, we have the privilege of living this every day, so we're able to see it, so we'd like to encourage you to enjoy these next few things we've got to share. I'd like to start with our preschool experience. Preschool is our program that provides our new little cruisers with an understanding of the purpose of learning and instilling in them from that very young age that they have the power within them to produce the results that they want. This is our springboard to a successful K-12 experience. It provides our students with a strong foundation. We have a half day program, four days a week, for 167 preschoolers in six classrooms in three schools in our district. We do use the state standard preschool program we recently received a five-star rating, which is the highest preschool rating you can receive in Ohio, and this is our second year to do so. Our students do develop reading and math skills, also focusing on science and history. And this is really our year to build that foundation so that they are ready. So I'd like you to take a little tour with me in one of our preschool classrooms with our lead teacher, Sheila Downing. We are a five-star program. I think our teachers are phenomenal. All of our teachers are master degreed. The Ohio Department of Education is the one that comes in and they're the ones that determine who is a five-star, four-star, or a three-star. If you are in a school district, you have to have a three-star or above. And in order to get a five-star, you have to go above and beyond. I think the thing that surprises them the most is the type of math that we're already presenting to the children. We're working on things with more or less, things with science physical-based science and life sciences that we're already practicing on working on the life science um, as far as like the um, life cycle of the baby chick, um, different things like that. The parents are really surprised to hear about all those scientific-based activities that we're doing as well as the phonemics, um, answering questions. It's not just about reading a book, it's being able to process what's been read to them and to be able to reiterate that to us. So we're asking really abstract type questions that the kids really have to put their thought into. Teaching problem solving skills with students is um, very tricky, but it's play-based. We do a lot of activities that the kids don't even really realize what they're learning, but they're learning it because we're doing a lot of play activities. I think the thing that most excites my kids is science projects. We do lots of hands-on activities. Um, I think it's awesome if it's not in the hands, it's not in the brain. And so if whatever I can give them that they're the inquiry process, that I'm sitting there and, and watching them. And I do um, a thing with the parents where I do a remind. So I'm taking pictures throughout the school day too, and I try and send those to the parents not every day but I do try and send that to the parents so that they can get a feel of what's going on in their in their child's class my job is to incorporate into the students the love of learning I'm their first teacher we as preschool teachers are their first teacher if we can give them a great foundation for the love of learning what we hope is every year upon that everybody just keeps building and by the time they get ready to graduate we've got this fantastic student an all-around student that has had everything from pre-k all the way up that when they go out into society they're just a fantastic person to put out there in society If you ever have a stressful day, it's the best place to go sit and, and watch the little ones. Our elementary years are years of inspiration. 
These are the critical years to instill in our young cruisers a love for learning and, an inspire, and inspiring them to dream. We have all day, every day kindergarten with 439 kindergartners and 2,162 first through fifth graders. We follow our Ohio curriculum. Our key goal for our kindergartners is to make sure that they have basic reading skills by the end of the year and they are ready for their first grade experience. They are working on math and algebraic equations, equations hands-on projects through their learning. Our grades one through five are working on their big five reading skills, which is phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, comprehension, and fluency. They really start to dabble into fiction and nonfiction and learn how to be writers. In history, they are learning about government, about ecosystems, transportation systems, how to use a map, how to write a research paper. They're working on their Chromebooks. And at our elementary level is where we begin to see our students struggle as they have to try hard to learn these new skills. But what we want to instill in them is that risk taking is important and how to be resilient to overcome those challenges. So let's hear from our elementary teachers and students to see what they say about their daily journey. Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, will you see me with me? Kindergarten is fun. Kindergarten now is interesting that parents see what we get to do all day long in a full day classroom. Um, they th we do play, we do have some fun, but they notice what we have to do for kindergartners to be ready for first grade. Being able to read now and also being able to write a four sentence paragraph, I guess you could say, during writing. And they're just surprised at how much they need to know, even how many sight words and what we have to do now. My favorite book is Taking Risk Taking. The book is about you, when you're scared to do something, you have to try it. And then when you get better at it, you can keep doing it. I feel like they're solid in their reading and in their math, and I feel like it's like a rocket ship. As soon as you hit third grade, there, you know, you're seeing more of their reading skills. You're seeing their math take off, and I just really feel like you can do um, so much more because you're able to build on what they already know. So I really love that. In school. We are reading like picture books and like taking a break at a time and talking about what's happening, doing restating things, doing some homework with it, and then we're doing compare and contrast, all that good stuff. I like math because I find it like it's kind of easy but then it's hard and I kind of like a challenge. And we're doing multiplying and subtracting and adding fractions. When my students leave my classroom this summer to go home, I want them to remember our classroom as a place that was safe and a place that they got to build confidence and learn how to be better citizens. Moving on to the middle school years, our early teenagers are um, <laughs> Learning how to be cruisers. Um, it is really vital in these years that our staff is providing support to them and helping them understand their potential um, and how they have control over that. This is that time where they're experiencing that and their understanding that they have potential is really crucial. We have 1,398 middle schoolers across our three middle schools and our goal is to help really increase rigor from their elementary experience to middle school level as this is their transition to high school. This is an important time for them to develop resilience, perseverance, and grit. Our middle schoolers focus on their core content, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies, and have opportunity as well to take college courses if they qualify. And this is also the first time they have to experience band, choir, and athletics. They also have um, career pathway introductions, and this is a time that they have to start planning their college or career pathway. So I'd like to give you some insight into the middle school journey. One of 
when I came to Groveport, I noticed that they really encompassed the idea of it's great to be a cruiser. And throughout my journey here um, over the last 12 years, I really have felt like I belong, I'm heard, I matter. And I think Groveport does a wonderful job at encompassing that with all stakeholders um, in our district. I really like how the teachers take their time to explain something instead of just kind of throwing what you're doing in front of you and say this is what you're supposed to do. Um, specifically my math teacher, she kind of breaks it down and shows you step by step how to do it, what you're going to see, and then how it's easier for you to comprehend it and then apply what you've learned um, to do the actual problem. We talk about the students growing, but it's a growing process for us as teachers because, you know, we have to adapt to make sure that they're accounted for, their learning is accounted for, and that they're able to meet the expectations that we have. And so if I have expectations and I'm very rigid about it, it's finding out the kids that are here and what works best that's going to fit them. And, and as a teacher, you have to be extremely flexible. One way I help students overcome their fear is right from the beginning of the year, we talk about mistakes and how mistakes are expected. Um, mistakes are encouraged. Mistakes are the way that we learn. So it's okay to make a mistake. What's important is how you overcome that mistake and what you do to make sure that the next time you have a turn or a chance at doing it, that we're fixing those errors that we made the last time. My teachers, they are very helpful. They're always willing to help when I need help. My math teacher, Ms. Sharp, I, I was terrible at math until she came to me and sat down with me and explained everything. One way that I've seen students change with regards to success is that once they experience that success and it's celebrated that they crave more of it. So once they are successful and we are acknowledging that they were successful, you notice their self-esteem self start to improve. There's going to be a lot of challenges ahead, you know, transitioning into the high school. They're going to have a lot of challenges just as individuals and as young adults growing into, you know, what they want to do. And so the biggest thing I tell them is that, you know, you're going to have your struggles. The biggest thing is, is can you rise above those? Can you take, you know, the struggles that you have here as, as an eighth grader and put it to learning in the high school? And last but not least is high school. This is the time for our oldest cruisers to start exploring their interest. It's a time that we are dedicated to serving them to help them define their future and know what they want out of their K-12 experience and that they find value, that they know that they can go and do the things that they want to do and serve those that they will serve. We have 1,827 students between our main campus and cruiser campus. 823 of those students are involved in our career pathways. The pathways are geared to match our students' desires and goals following graduation. Beyond our 20 core academic classes, we also have 168 course offerings to help pique students' interests. And those range from AP to a variety of elective courses. Meeting social emotional needs and creativity in high school is really important for us. We're able to do that with an array of clubs, athletics, performing arts opportunities, and more. The ultimate goal for us in high school is to prepare our students for after graduation so that they are able to choose the workforce, military, start their own business, take an industry credential into the workforce, or attend college. So let's uh, take a journey with one of our high school students. Overall, I think our goal as educators here in this district is to prepare our students for college and career readiness. And having AP classes at an early high school level gives these students the opportunity not only to get to compete in our district, but against other districts and the surrounding metropolitan area. I'm taking AP Psychology. I'm also taking um, Marketing, 
uh, with Mr. Rob, and that, that's a technical technical class through, it's a satellite class through Eastern Career Center. Um, we've actually, it's our second year of taking it. It's a two-year class with for two periods each day. Um, I'm taking Honors English 12 with Mrs. O'Brien. I am also taking Spanish 3. I'm taking that to get my Honors Diploma, and then after that I'm taking Environmental Science to also get my fourth science credit. I get college credit, uh, but marketing's really helped me. You know Rob, he's a great teacher, teaches everything, and we get to go on field trips, you know. We don't get to go on field trips, you know, that much in uh, middle school. One of the things that I've found specifically in the area of mindset, which we've been talking a lot about, improving mindset of our community, and how that will translate to academics as well. In ceramics, students have not had the opportunity to work with clay much up until this point. And so they're all beginners. And so at the beginning of the semester, I tell them, this is about learning how to fail and viewing those failures as stepping stones to success. So you're going to fail many times and then the only option is to just try again and do it better. You learn from your failures and then you improve upon those to make your work. So mindset has become very important in the ceramic studio specifically. Groveport Madison High School has prepared me by challenging me. The classes that I take, I take uh, honors classes, AP, I took one AP class. And the challenging work and the way the teachers are involved has really helped me. So as you can see, being a cruiser is special. Um, it's important to us that our students have a successful journey. The cruiser spirit defines us as a school district and a community. It's illustrated in the resolve that we have as we keep pushing forward to do more than we ever thought possible and hold our head high in spite of everything else and what everyone else might perceive or believe. As we look to John Solomon Rary as an example, of what it takes to persevere and reach one's ultimate success, we believe that all cruisers are valuable. We will unconditionally serve, support, and inspire. Therefore, every cruiser will maximize their unique purpose, potential, and power to produce the results that they want. We are proud of what we've accomplished these last few years, and it would not have been possible without the support of our taxpayers, our partners, our parents, students, and staff. And we are committed to keeping you informed and being transparent in our actions as we continue forward. I would like to take a moment to thank all of our staff and students who were in our, our career cruiser, sorry, pathway videos. Um, they took time out of their day to help us, so we're so proud of them and thank them. We'd like to um, thank everyone who's preparing all the food for us to eat, the art that you will get to see, and want to just close with a few things. Be sure to stop by the gym. Our district art show will be open. We have displays from all of our schools, our district departments, and our community partners. Um, our schools all have tables as well. I think you will enjoy the treats that were um, served and made by our culinary art students that um, participate at Eastland Fairfield Career Center. And we'd like to end this with a really short, quick performance from our Middle School North Band. And also remind you at the doors when you leave, you have an opportunity to take an annual report with you that recaps this presentation. And thank you for coming to our State of the School celebration.